Christmas stories weren't just legends. Because that's what a real lost city looks like. That's Ciudad Perdida, the lost city. There are maps made of ink, and then there are maps made of light. A team of researchers recently used an experimental laser skimmer to erase the jungle from the mountains of Colombia, hoping to see the true face of the land around Ciudad Perdida. What they saw in the data forced them to pull the plug on the operation. Look at that. Well, you can see all the paths. These paths, they followed the terrain off of this central terrace on the main ridge, and they kind of go out in every direction. Buried under the trees was a network of structures so vast and sophisticated, it looked alien. It wasn't just bigger than they thought, it was something else entirely, a ghost of a civilization that history forgot to write down, and for good reason. Data that defied logic. Deep within the Sierra Nevada to Santa Marta Mountains in northern Colombia, the jungle is king. It's a relentless vertical world of suffocating humidity, venomous snakes, and near impenetrable foliage. For archaeologists, it's a nightmare. For centuries, it guarded one of South America's greatest secrets, a stone city of terraces and plazas called Ciudad Perdida, or Teyuna, as the local indigenous people know it. Getting there requires a grueling multi-day trek that pushes even the fittest to their limits. Ciudad Perdida, the lost city, is high up in Colombia's most isolated mountain range, the Sierra Nevada. The city itself, rediscovered in the 1970s, was considered a monumental achievement, a lone, mysterious outpost of the ancient Tyrona culture. But here's the thing nobody tells you. What we called the Lost City was not the end of the story, it was barely the beginning. Recently, a team of international researchers decided to do what no human trek could, peel back the jungle itself. They employed an experimental high-altitude LIDAR skimmer a sophisticated piece of tech that is essentially a laser-based x-ray for landscapes. LiDAR is a technology that allows you to fully document everything from the ground surface to the highest thing on the ground. From a plane flying high above, it shoots billions of laser pulses toward the ground. Most bounce off the trees, but a few find their way through the gaps, hitting the forest floor and reflecting back. A powerful computer then analyzes these returns, digitally erasing the vegetation to reveal the true topography, the naked earth hidden beneath. The plan was simple. Scan the area around Ciudad Perdida and see if any small forgotten settlements were hiding nearby. To put it mildly, what they found was not a small settlement. As the raw data began to process, the mood in the lab shifted from academic curiosity to stunned silence. The computer screen, which should have shown the familiar lumpy, jungle-covered hillsides, began to render something impossible. It was a web, a sprawling geometric network of lines and shapes that stretched for miles in every direction from the known city. These weren't natural formations. The system was painting a picture of massive, interconnected urban centers, plazas, stone roads, and agricultural terraces, all linked with the precision of a modern city grid. The initial reaction was disbelief. Many people are crazy about finding new ruins, but this was on another level. The first thought was that the experimental LiDAR unit was malfunctioning, creating ghost images or artifacts in the data. The lead archaeologist made a stunning call. Halt the scan. They shut it down. The information was simply too overwhelming, too paradigm-shattering. They needed to verify what they were seeing before going any further because if the data was real, it didn't just add a new chapter to the story of the Tyrona, it proved the entire book had been wrong. They hadn't found a lost city, they had stumbled upon the ghost of a lost civilization that was bigger, older, and vastly more sophisticated than anyone had ever dared to imagine. They run all the way down to the coast of the Caribbean. It's about 15 miles or so as the crow flies. That's the same coastline where the Spanish first landed in 1501. What many have overlooked for decades was that Ciudad Perdida wasn't an isolated fortress. It was a capital. The first pass revealed over 200 previously unknown settlements, some of them nearly as large as Ciudad Perdida itself. The most jaw-dropping feature was the road system. The LIDAR uncovered a complex network of stone-paved paths and grand causeways, some over 30 feet wide connecting these population centers. They weren't simple footpaths, they were feats of engineering carved into mountainsides and spanning deep ravines. 
the scale was staggering. This wasn't a tribe living in a single city. This was a sprawling kingdom, a society of potentially up to one million people. It's huge. How many people would have lived here? About two to 3,000 at its peak. And then about 10,000 people living in the upper part of the basin. 10,000? Yeah. Thriving in an environment previously thought to be too hostile to support such a population. The lost city was just one node in a massive interconnected web of life that dominated the entire mountain range. The project was shut down not because of failure, but because of a success so profound it made their original mission obsolete. They now had a map to a world that shouldn't exist. A city older than Machu Picchu. To understand why the LiDAR data was so earth-shattering, you have to know the original story of Ciudad Perdida, a tale wrapped in treasure, conflict, and mystery. For almost 400 years after the Spanish conquest, the city was completely wiped from memory. It existed only in the whispers and sacred knowledge of the region's indigenous groups, the Kogi, Wiwa, Arhuaco, and Kankuamo, who are the direct descendants of the Tyrona and consider the site a sacred ancestral ground. To the outside world, it was nothing. The jungle had swallowed it whole. But not all things are what they seem. In the early 1970s, a group of local treasure hunters, or guaqueros, were scouring the mountains for undiscovered Tyrona tombs, which were often filled with exquisite gold artifacts. One of these groups, led by a man named Florentino Sepulveda, stumbled upon a series of over 1,200 stone steps ascending a steep mountainside. Climbing them, they emerged onto a series of stunning circular stone terraces. They had found it. They had found the lost city of the Tyrona. They called it Infierno Verde, or Green Hell, because of the brutal journey to get there. For the next few years, the site became a secret, violent black market for priceless gold figurines, pottery, and jewelry. Word eventually leaked out, and rival groups of guaqueros began fighting over control of the ruins, leaving a trail of destruction in their wake. Finally, in 1976, the Colombian government was alerted and archaeologists arrived to secure the site. What they documented was incredible. A city built around 650 AD, making it centuries older than the famous Incan site of Machu Picchu. It was a marvel of urban planning, built on a ridge with a complex system. Who built all this? It was the people that we call the Tairona, their predecessors, it began to be built around 600 AD of interconnected terraces, plazas, canals, and tiled roads. The Tyrona were master stonemasons and engineers. They had figured out how to build a stable, functioning city in a place with torrential rainfall and constant landslides. They developed sophisticated water channels to prevent erosion and manage the flow of water down the mountain. Everything was designed to work in harmony with the treacherous landscape, not against it. You see, this was a society that understood engineering on a level that baffled experts. Yet, for all its brilliance, the academic consensus was that Ciudad Perdida was a unique, isolated phenomenon, a spectacular but lonely capital of a mountain-dwelling people who eventually vanished after the arrival of the Spanish. The conventional wisdom was that the surrounding jungle was simply too difficult, too vertical to support anything more. That was the story set in stone for nearly 50 years. It's taken us over 40 years of work to clear out and survey the site, trying to tease out what these people were thinking when they were building it. The thing nobody tells you is that this story was based on what could be seen and reached on foot. Archaeology was limited by the speed of a machete and the endurance of the human body. Researchers could only guess at what lay a few miles away, under a hundred feet of canopy. They saw the magnificent city, but they completely missed the kingdom it commanded. The LiDAR scan didn't just find new buildings, it shattered the very foundation of this long-held belief. The idea of an isolated city was blown out of the water. This was the historical blind spot, the fatal flaw in their understanding that the experimental skimmer exposed in a matter of hours. The lonely mountain fortress was actually a bustling capital in a kingdom of hundreds of towns. The Tyrona Superstate
The data from the LiDAR skimmer didn't just show more of the same. It revealed a level of organization and engineering that has sent shockwaves through the archaeological community and has even attracted the attention of ancient astronaut theorists. The test scans of Ciudad Perdida prove that the LiDAR technology does work here. The sheer complexity of what was uncovered is hard to wrap your head around. What the scan showed was not a collection of random villages, but a highly structured, almost perfectly planned network. The distribution of the settlement seemed to follow a deliberate pattern, a kind of fractal geometry spreading across the mountain slopes. Larger centers were connected by wide causeways, which then branched off into smaller roads leading to minor settlements, which in turn were connected by paths to individual farmsteads. It was a fully integrated system, as complex as the Roman road network, but built in a far more challenging environment. Many people are crazy about the pyramids of Egypt or the lines at Nazca, but what the Tyrona built is in many ways more impressive. They didn't have a flat desert or a river valley to work with, they had a near vertical jungle. To build their civilization, they effectively reshaped the mountains themselves. The LiDAR revealed an astonishing number of terraces far more than were needed for just the city dwellers. These terraces were used for agriculture, allowing them to grow crops like maize, beans, and coca on slopes as steep as 40 degrees. But they also served another purpose, stabilizing the entire mountainside. This civilization had engineered its own environment to prevent erosion and landslides on a massive scale. It's a level of terraforming that seems almost futuristic. The most baffling discovery, however, relates to a series of massive, flattened hilltops. While Ciudad Perdida is built of circular terraces, these other sites feature enormous rectangular platforms, some the size of several football fields. Archaeologists on the ground have only begun to investigate these sites, but their purpose is a complete mystery. They don't appear to be for housing or farming. Their sheer size and perfectly level construction have led to some wild speculation. Some fringe theories propose they were ceremonial platforms aligned with celestial bodies like the Sun and the Pleiades star cluster, which was important to many ancient American cultures. Others, noting their resemblance to landing strips, have inevitably drawn comparisons to alien visitors, suggesting these were platforms for something not of this world. While there is zero evidence for this, it highlights just how out of place these structures seem. They represent a type of construction and a scale of labor that we just didn't think a pre-Columbian society in this region was capable of. The LiDAR essentially handed us a mystery that is even bigger than the one we thought we had solved. The data suggests a society with a powerful central authority capable of organizing labor on a massive scale, with architects and engineers who had a profound understanding of mathematics, hydrology, and geology. How did they do it? How did they plan and execute a construction project that spanned an entire mountain range without modern tools, aerial surveying, or even the wheel? It's a question that currently has no answer. The civilization's engineering prowess was simply on another level, challenging our understanding of ancient capabilities. The Next Forbidden Frontier for anyone watching this, it's easy to get caught up in the incredible technology and the sheer scale of what the LiDAR found. This feels like we're just peering back into time, back to the time that the last Tyrona lived here, about 400 years ago. It feels like the whole mystery of the Tyrona has been solved overnight. But the thing is, what the LiDAR has given us is not an answer, but a map filled with thousands of new questions. LiDAR can see the shape of the ground, but it can't see what's inside the remaining structures or under the floors of the plazas. It can't tell us the names of the leaders who commanded this kingdom or the beliefs that guided their lives. You see, the scan is just the first step in a journey that will take generations. Every single one of those newly identified settlements needs to be explored on the ground in that same green hell that has guarded these secrets for so long. Are we missing a key detail that explains everything? The LiDAR map shows us the bones of the civilization, but the story of its people, their art, their conflicts, their daily struggles, is still locked away in artifacts buried beneath the jungle floor. The looters were after the gold that's in the burials. And one looter came out with, uh, you know, 
more than 80 pieces of gold from one burial. What many have overlooked is the monumental task that lies ahead. Excavating even a small portion of this vast network is a colossal undertaking, requiring decades of work and millions of dollars. The region is still incredibly remote and faces modern threats. The same technology that reveals these wonders to scientists also reveals them to those who would plunder them for profit, making the race to uncover these secrets even more urgent. And then there's the biggest question of all. If this civilization was so powerful, so advanced, and so enormous, where did it go? Around the late 1600s, long after the Spanish arrived on the coast, the Tyrona Kingdom appears to have collapsed. The cities were abandoned, the highways fell into disuse, and the jungle began its slow, relentless process of reclaiming the stone. Why did they leave? The conflict with the Spanish was brutal, but it doesn't seem to be the whole story. Some evidence suggests the arrival of European diseases to which they had no immunity. Other theories point to internal conflict or a deliberate choice by the Tyrona to retreat deeper into the mountains and abandon their cities to preserve their culture, a culture that lives on today in their descendants. The truth that defied logic is now the new reality, and the work of understanding it has only just begun. Were the Tyrona simply advanced? or did they have help? Like and subscribe for more mysteries.